Over the past few videos, we found that the path of least action is the one that follows Newton's second law. Now in this video, I want to show you what we would have gotten if we were a little bit more general in our derivation. So I'll use the letter S again. So S equals the integral from time one or T1 to T2 of some function. We're not going to be uh, specific about what this function looks like right now. We're just going to say it's some function using the letter L, some function of, of x of t. And it's also a function of the time derivative or the, or the derivative with respect to t of x of t. So L is a function of both of these things. And we're integrating it over the variable t. Now here, this, this, this function here is called the Lagrangian. Lagrangian. And in, in our problems in physics, it will actually be the kinetic energy, which is a function of the derivative of the position, minus the potential energy, which is a function of uh, the position. So you can see that the Lagrangian is a function of both the time derivative of x and x itself. But if we're not specific about what this function L looks like, and we go through the same sort of steps, but but just with a general function, we end up getting the requirement that the derivative of L with respect to x minus the time derivative, oops, the time derivative of the derivative of L with respect to the time derivative of x, x dot, equals zero. <coughs> now these are partial derivatives because in general, x and x dot are linked together. So if it was a full derivative, uh, we might have to do a chain rule and get some extra terms, but, but we don't have to worry about that right here. It might be good to do a video about uh, when we're worried about full derivatives and when we're worried about partial derivatives. But anyway, this is this equation is called the Euler-Lagrange equation or, or Lagrange's equation or the Lagrange equation of motion. I've heard it called a few things. I'm going to call it the Euler-Lagrange equation. And this is in one dimension, right? We would have, if this was a vector quantity, our position, we would have uh, if it were in three dimensions, we would have three equations uh, with this uh, of this form, x, y, and z, or x1, x2, x3, however we chose to label our different directions. The Euler-Lagrange equation. So if we put in our specific forms of L equals uh, our, uh, the difference between our kinetic energy and our potential energy, and we used one half mv squared and and called u prime of x force, so we would end up getting back f equals ma, Newton's second law. But this is useful because we don't have to use those normal coordinates, those rectangular coordinates that we're used to. There's actually a lot of flexibility in our choice of coordinates, and that's when this is useful. So useful with generalized coordinates useful with generalized coordinates. Chords. Z. So the point of this video really is that this is just a fancy version of F equals MA. And in the next few videos, we'll talk about generalized coordinates and do a few problems using them.